Hey guys, so this is from an awesome day out shark diving off of Jupiter, Florida. This was an amazing day out on the water. We had so many sharks show up. These guys right here, these are silkies. That's pretty much the main shark we had that day, but we had silky sharks, dusky sharks, sandbar sharks, and bull sharks all show up that day, which was just amazing. Definitely some of my favorite species. And this is what we call the summer pelagic season. So this time of year, a lot of these sharks that are usually pelagic, as in they're way out in the deep offshore waters, will come in closer to the coast and we're able to see them. Now we're only about, uh, I think at this point, we're probably about four or five miles offshore from Jupiter. And that's where we're encountering these guys in this beautiful blue water. Now if you watch, right about here coming up the middle, that smaller, much lighter shark, that one is a sandbar shark. And the sandbars have like, they look like they have oversized fins and they're lighter in color. Now you'll also notice I'm diving down with no air tank. This is called free diving. So I'm holding my breath as I'm going down like this. Now I personally prefer to free dive, but I also do scuba diving as well. Now one of the reasons why I like to free dive with the sharks is the bubbles can sometimes scare them, sometimes they get used to it, but some of the newer ones sometimes are afraid of the bubbles, so I prefer to free dive down there. And talking about free diving, a lot of people then ask, well, how deep do you go? How long do you hold your breath? Now I can hold my breath a little bit over three minutes and I have been down to 80 feet on just one breath of air before, but usually when I'm out here doing this, I'm only holding my breath about a minute, a minute or a half at a time. And I'm usually only going down around 20 to 50 feet max. Now you can also see some people in the background sometimes. That's because I run these trips to bring people out. I'm actually running a trip that's open to the public and I'll have people uh, sign up for it. Now I do them pretty haphazardly. There's not really much of a schedule. I do them in between my gator work. But if you wanted to, you can send me an email and when I get a chance, I bring people out to come swim with the sharks. And you don't have to be scuba certified or anything like that. It's just a snorkeling trip. And you don't even have to be able to free dive down because we get them up close, right up at the surface sometimes too. Now that's a nice pretty sand bar you saw just swim by right there. So obviously there's a lot of sharks here and you're probably thinking, how is this safe? So these are wild apex predators and I don't want to give you a false illusion. If you do this the wrong way, yes, it is dangerous. And yes, these are potentially dangerous animals. But when you approach the situation correctly, as you can see in this video, they're incredibly calm and at no point during this dive did I feel at all in danger for my life or anything like that. So what's the right way to do this? Well, what we're doing, this is a baited dive, but there is no live bait, okay? We have a bait crate with some uh, some fish fillets in there, and that's what gets the sharks to come over and want to check the thing out. But I'm not hand feeding the sharks. We don't have any struggling fish, nobody spear fishing or anything like that. And we're all very, very calm. Now the shark has the Ampulave Lorenzini, those electrosensory uh, ability that they have. And so if you're freaking out and your heart rate is highly elevated, they can pick up on that. It doesn't mean they're necessarily gonna attack if you are, but they do notice that. And so the more calm I am, they notice that as well, and the more calm they are. And I keep all my movements very calm and very controlled as well. And so doing all this, they, they read your body language and things like that, and they realize, this guy's pretty calm. You know, like this is not a high energy, crazy situation. And they kind of come into that same mindset. So a common misconception is people think that if there's blood in the water, the sharks go into a feeding frenzy. And that's just simply not true. Now, do they detect blood exceptionally well? Yes, absolutely. They can detect blood from a great distance away. And they pick up on the smell and they do come in to check it out, but they don't come in to necessarily kill you. They come in to investigate the situation. Now, 
what does send them into a frenzy is struggle okay now if you like if you're spear fishing and you shoot a fish and that fish is struggling and freaking out the sharks come in hot and they are ready because they know something's struggling and they come in ready to kill it and so that's how you can get in these really bad situations if you're spear fishing and uh, there's sharks around and that's how a lot of people do end up getting bit or if you are just simply swimming and you know humans are not exactly the most elegant swimmers out there so when people are swimming from their point of view on the surface you do look like you're just kind of flailing around and that can also draw their attention so again a really big part is staying calm and controlled about what you're doing now you can see this one he came up to really investigate me he's getting a little bit too curious so i did grab him by the nose and kind of push him back and you see he comes forward again a little bit and you can't see from this angle but i push him away again and he just kind of goes off on his way but notice i didn't like i didn't punch the shark in the face i just gently redirected the shark okay and so that one right there actually just hit the dome of the camera and uh, turned away and so you can see these guys i mean they're they're a little bit more excitable right now um but they're not they're not attacking me in any way. They're just kind of cruising around. They're looking for food. And you can see from their body language, they are being relatively calm right now. So you might be wondering, well, how do shark attacks happen then if these guys are relatively calm like what I'm saying? Well, usually when a shark attack happens, it happens for a number of different reasons, such as misidentification. That one happens a lot. If you're in murky water, the shark can detect that there's a living entity ahead of it because they can read that electrical signal, but they can't really see it. They can smell you, they can detect you, but they can't see you. And the only way they know how to investigate is with their mouth. So if you're in murky water, that can end up with somebody getting bit by a shark. Now, another way people get bit by sharks is if, uh, well, for one, if you are spear fishing, and like I was mentioning earlier, if you shoot a fish and you have a struggling fish, then that can definitely lead to some bad moments there. So to be safe when spear fishing, try not to go where there are a lot of sharks. If you see sharks present, probably not a good idea, and definitely be a good shot, because if you can just kill the fish immediately, it's not gonna attract all the attention. But when they're struggling and going crazy, that's what attracts the attention. And then of course, swimming in clear water and just being aware. You know, they're not out to get you. They're really not. 